Hello, I'm Juliana Blomquist, Crane Fiesta Manager for Friends of Bosque del Apache, and I want to thank you for joining us from the comfort and safety of your own home for our first ever entirely virtual Crane Fiesta. This year's fiesta is brought to you by Friends of Bosque del Apache and is accumulation of hard work and many important partnerships with our amazing refuge staff, volunteers, sponsors, and presenters. Friends of Bosque del Apache is a nonprofit organization working hard since 1993 to fund many important and critical projects on the refuge, but we could not do it without the contributions of our loyal family of members and donors. If you'd like to learn more about how Friends has supported the refuge over the last three decades, or if you're enjoying Crane Fiesta and would like to join the Friends or make a donation, please visit our website, www.friendswithbosquedelapache.org. Now I'll turn it over to our presenter, Sandra Knoll, who is best known for her crane workshops and webinars. Friends are proud to partner with her again this year. Thank you for joining us, Sandra. Well, thank you so much. And I am absolutely delighted to be here as part of the Friends of Bosque del Apache's educational programming, which is excellent. So we're gonna move on to a screen share now for Raptors. Um, most of you may know me through my work with Sandhill Cranes, but today I have the opportunity to share another great family of birds with you, birds of prey or raptors. Um, this is a fascinating family of birds and one I have been long um, identified with. I think part of you may also do that because these are some of the first birds we ever see. And of course our national symbol is here. So, the family of raptors starts for me as a little girl. When I was about five or six, I could run really fast. And one day I ran so fast that I actually flew. I remember flying for about 100 yards, as I recall, and it was glorious. And I can't help but wonder if any of you have ever fantasized about flying yourself. Well, certainly as an adult, I've continued that fascination with birds. And now, as I think of flight, I think about um, raptors because raptors allow you to soar and sur survey the landscape like an eagle, or perhaps you would have the agility of an exhibitor or even the speed of a falcon. So raptors are still very much associated with many people's thoughts of flight altogether. And I found a way to get a little closer, up close and personal with these birds. An organization called Hawk Watch uh, does, among other things, raptor monitoring. And they have monitoring stations around the country that are active every fall. So whenever I can, I go to the um, monitoring station in the Manzano Mountains, just south of Albuquerque. That's where there is a corridor that raptors pass through. There are others in Mexico, in Pennsylvania, at Hawk Mountain and at Grand Canyon. So you can check around and maybe find one near you. So at these monitoring stations, they not only observe and count the different species of raptors that come through, but they also have another little area where some of the birds are lured in and that's when they can do health checks and ban these birds. And of course the highlight for me is always to be able to briefly hold and then release one of the banded birds here, a Cooper's hawk. But today, I'm wanting to give you an overview of the family of raptors as an introduction to the live in the field programs of falconer Matt Mitchell. And you can certainly uh, go on to the um, Friends website to register for his programs. Um, Matt has been a falconer, or he's a master falconer. He's been doing this for years. And he um, uh, has a fabulous uh, interaction with these birds that he shares with you. And if you haven't had the opportunity to learn about the deadly beauty behavior of falcons, uh, join Matt. And um, uh, virtually this year, but hopefully in coming years, you will be able to return to Bosque del Apache and Festival of the Cranes where he does his programs. 
Today, mine will be an overview of the family of raptors to kind of give a background for Matt's coming work. The family of raptors is a pretty big family and fairly diverse. Um, this will not be a how-to for identification of raptors, nor it is, an, is it an exhaustive review of all the raptors of North America. Rather, it's an overview of this group of birds. So raptors are found everywhere on the, on the planet, with the exception of Antarctica and the Arctic ice cap. And these birds are characterized uh, by three of their physical characteristics, their eyes, their beaks, and their talons. Raptors are basically uh, hunters, and all of those uh, pieces of their anatomy are engaged in the hunting. Most hunt for live prey, whether it be vertebrates or insects, depending on the species and the time of year. And a few are also carrion eaters, or they are not above fighting for and stealing food from one another like these two immature bald eagles who are actually practicing their skills, I believe, and um, contesting a meadowlark that was caught by one of them. So let's go into those characteristics, the eyes. Raptors have large eyes for their body size, and these eyes have special muscles that um, special sets of muscles that allow them to rapidly focus and track prey while they're in flight. The reptilian ancestry of raptors, and as it is for all birds, can be seen in that bony ridge and a socket that encases the eye in their head. Um, and that uh, has benefits, but it also has uh, some detriments. That means that their eyes are fixed in place and that they have to totally change their body position, their head position, in order to change viewpoint. And have you ever seen raptors, particularly young birds, kind of standing on a bench and bobbing their head up and down? Well, this is a way that they're also developing their focusing skills. Raptors also have the beaks, the sharp, curved, sometimes serrated beaks that are used for tearing flesh. But the beaks are not their major um, weapon or means of, of uh, killing and getting food. That would be the feet. Raptors in general have strong legs, powerful leg muscles with sturdy toes and long curved talons. And that's used to secure uh, prey, to kill prey, and also as weapons. Now there are, of course, exceptions to this, as there always are. Um, so I will certainly point out the exceptions in the raptor family to these general characteristics as we go along. The classic uh, raptor characteristics I said are the eyes, beaks, and feet. And the classic example of those is the bald eagle. And of course, it was the eagle eye beak and feet that I used in that description. Um, there are two um, species of eagle in North America and both can be seen at Bosque del Apache. That is the American bald eagle and the golden eagle. Fabulous birds. Now the next group of raptors that we'll look at is certainly the exception. Uh, to most of those rules, the turkey vulture or the North American vultures in general. These birds hunt more by smell than by vision and they have an incredible sense of smell. They um, don't have very strong feet and no talons to speak of. Now there are three classifications of vulture in North America. The turkey vulture is the one that can be seen here in um, this part of New Mexico. Um, there's also the black vulture, and then of course, the largest of North American birds, the California condor. 
all are considered some species within the raptor family. Another group of species that does have the characteristics we spoke about are kites. And kites get that name because they excel in taking advantage of wind currents. Now there are five species of kites in North America, but only two species are found in the western part of our country. And that would be this white-tailed kite and the Mississippi kite. Both of them are rare to be seen at Bosque del Apache and this part of New Mexico. But I was uh, fortunate a couple of years ago to watch a white-tailed kite, also known for those black uh, wing uh, shoulders. Um, got to watch that bird for about 15 minutes and it was striking. So another subgroup of species in the raptor family. Now some species are so unique there are none others in the group, they stand alone. And one of those is the Northern Harrier. Now this is a ground nesting bird frequently seen at Bosque del Apache. And it um, hunts low, flying over farmlands and grasslands and marshes. It's also known as the marsh hawk. Um, but it flies so low in hunting for a good reason. This bird has a particular configuration of feathers, a disc around its face, very much like um, an owl's. And that disc funnels sound into the ear canals. So this bird hunts by hearing as much as by vision, a very unique capacity. Another standalone raptor is the osprey. Uh, now this is a bird that prefers a diet of fish a beautiful bird, but it is unique in the way it gets its fish. Now the bald eagle also likes fish, but it'll fly over water and dip down with its talons and grab the fish. Whereas an osprey swings its legs up parallel to its head and dives into the water head first where it will then capture its fish. So it has a, a fabulous fishing technique. It is sometimes seen at Bosque del Apache but certainly far more um, frequently at a deep water lake such as Elephant Butte, which is not more than about 70 miles away as the osprey flies. Now they have other interesting adaptations. There are uh, scaly um, or rough uh, pads on their feet that allow them to hold and grip slippery fish. And in whatever position they grab that fish when they're underwater, once they get up and airborne, they will transfer it uh, to be perpendicular to their body for the best aerodynamics. They are a gorgeous bird uh, and a definitive raptor characteristic. But if you look closely at this osprey, you'll see line and tackle dangling from its feet. Um, and envision me now stepping up onto a stoke box because I want to talk about fishing line. This raptor probably suffered a slow and painful death from starvation because it was handicapped to hunt and fish and get food for itself and its family. So whenever you find fishing line or when, if it's your own line or just line that you encounter while walking along a river or a pond or the ocean, pick it up and get it properly disposed of. Because osprey are not the only birds impacted. Cormorants, gulls, shorebirds, even songbirds who sometimes pick up fishing line to line their nest uh, can get their or their nestlings heads or feet trapped in that line and then they die also. So take care of fishing line. I envision me stepping down from the platform of my soapbox and we'll move on, but thank you. Hawks. Now, many of you have heard the term hawk as kind of an overview or a global uh, reference to all raptors or specifically to the three groups of exhibitors, videos, and falcons. But I wanna consider these and introduce them to you separately because they do have separate characteristics. Let's go first with the exhibitors. These would be birds like the Cooper's hawk that I got to release or the sharp shin hawk. I think of them as the artful dodgers of the raptor world. They're 
built for a dash and grab style of hunting in dense brush, and they're quite um, capable of that. Um, you can see the characteristics are there of eyes, beak, feet of Inti, of the great raptor hunters, even though they're slightly smaller uh, than the Budios or, of course, than eagles. And you can get an idea of the size, uh, this being another Cooper's hawk uh, on a um, sign out on the refuge. Um, and both Coopers and Sharpshinned are found on the refuge. Next are the Budios. And these, you can see their large wings. These are masters of the wind. These birds soar. And this example is an immature and uh, a little bit older red-tailed hawk. And certainly the red-tailed hawks are the most numerous of all the raptors um, year-round at Bosque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge and here all over New Mexico. Uh, a beautiful bird, uh, a very capable hunter. Other, well, let me go back once again. Other um, Budios that are found on the refuge include Swainson's hawks, um, Ferruginous hawks, rough leg hawks, not in as uh, uh, frequent sightings as the red tailed, but definitely uh, featured here on the refuge. Uh, Swainson's hawks are a little unusual in that they migrate sometimes in mass rather than individually or in very, very small groups. And one day uh, here at the refuge, I saw over a hundred in a farm field. It was a really cool thing. Now, there's another hawk uh, that I want to introduce you to, but it is rarely, rarely seen here in southern New Mexico. It's called the Harris hawk. And it's an unusual beauty oak uh, in that it's a very social bird. It often uh, continues to roost uh, in small groups, generally considered family groups, that will help hunt for and feed the young. And they hunt together uh, in something that is sometimes called a wolf pack. And the Harris hawk I wanted to point out because it is a big part of Matt's program. They hunt, because they're social and they like to hunt in groups, they're great with falconers. And here my partner, Irv, is enjoying a Harris hawk exchange with Matt in the field. Really neat bird as a beauty oak. And then we come to my very favorite of the raptors, and that is the group called falcons. Now falcons are a perfection of muscle and feather designed to capture prey in flight. That would be fast direct flight. The falcon you may be most familiar with is the peregrine falcon. And that bird has, is considered the fastest creature on our planet. He has been clocked in a stoop or a dive on prey at over 200 miles per hour. So you have that elegant, fast falcon. And then I have to introduce the counterpoint. This bird is hard to imagine as a falcon. Uh, it will not be seen here at Bosque del Apache, but I had to show you my picture of the crested caracara because I find it a funny bird with a rather um, not too good of a hairpiece and kind of chicken-like legs. How it is categorized with falcons in the field guides is still um, an amazement to me. But let's go on to the falcons here that you can see at Bosque del Apache and in uh, the middle and lower Rio Grande Valley. This is the smallest of our falcons, the American kestrel, a handsome bird. This is the male. Females um, are not as uh, beautiful, but they are larger. In the raptor family, females are all, always larger than the males. So the smallest is the kestrel. Next, we have the merlin. Then there's the prairie falcon, also called the ghost uh, of the prairie, as it's a very light colored bird for the most part. And then of course the peregrine falcon that I spoke about before as being so speedy. But both the peregrine and the kestrel are known to nest right here at Bosque del Apache. So sightings that you can definitely have. 
Now there's another falcon I wanted to tell you. Oh, this, before I go into my last one, is the Jir falcon. It's a northern species of falcon, a largest of them. Um, but I wanted to just mention it here with an internet photo um, because Matt will introduce you to that falcon in his program, the Jir falcon. But I wanted to end <coughs> with the apple model falcon. <coughs> Excuse me. The apple model falcon uh, is, is a handsome, beautiful bird. And um, it once ranged all of southern New Mexico and West Texas. The Chihuahuan Desert was its home. Uh, but in the 1950s, this bird became extirpated uh, from its historic range in all of North America. And extirpated means that it was driven to extinction in this landscape, although there was still a viable population in Mexico. Um, this is the Chihuahuan Desert landscape that it used to populate. And uh, about 10 years ago, the Peregrine Fund uh, spearheaded attempts to return the apple model falcon to this part of this historic range. Now the Peregrine Fund has been very successful in returning the peregrine falcon that was on the brink of extinction and they're doing incredible work with the California condor. But the apple model story is a little bit different. Part of this historic range and one of their reintroduction sites was the Armendaris Ranch, Ted Turner's Armendaris Ranch that borders Bosque del Apache to the south. So that these birds were once again seen on Bosque del Apache for a few years, about 10 years ago. Now in that effort, uh, which I was really proud to be a part of, young fledglings or young chicks that are not quite ready to fledge, um, they have been hatched in captivity and are generally kept away from any human contact until they are brought out to a hack site, which is a tower in the area that they will learn to hunt and hopefully populate as a nesting population. So once they're able to fly, that door will be uh, opened and they will be free to roam, but we would still feed them on the tower and certainly observe every bit of their um, uh, development as they learn to capture prey on their own. Um, they don't need parents to do this. These birds fly and hunt by instinct. So a really important program. But after a bit, we found uh, several years, uh, it was found that there was an insufficient prey base for these birds and too many predators. So their reintroduction into the Chihuahuan deserts of New Mexico and South Texas um, was unsuccessful. However, their introduction into the coastal plains of South Texas around um, the eastern part of the state um, really did work and there is a stable population of over 65 nesting pair in that area. So they have been successfully reintroduced to part of their historic range. And I mentioned this bird in detail because I enjoyed so much working with them, but also because this is another bird that uh, will be introduced to you in Matt Mitchell's live programs. And this segue gives me the opportunity to once again remind you to uh, register uh, on the Friends of Bosque del Apache's website for the falconry programs with Matt Mitchell. So thank you so much. I've really enjoyed this opportunity to talk to you about the family of raptors.